now it's getting exciting. Now, the first pivot table is not really a pivot table. It's the pivot table in Data Studio, but it's a table, right? We have two dimensions in rows. We have two metrics in columns. Easy peasy, nothing very interesting. But I can already see two differences between this one and the table in the first example, right? Here, for example, for the source medium direct none, we have lots of landing pages, but direct none is repeated on all the rows, right? And I cannot see the grand total just for the landing pages in source medium, right? It is the grand total for the whole table, all 992 rows. But in a pivot table, even with the basic one, we have subtotals. So writing instruments as a product category has not been repeated. We can see whatever product is within that category, right? And we can see the subtotal. And at the bottom, we can see the grand total. So having subtotals on top of grand totals is one of the features of a, even a simple pivot table compared to a table. And also not grouping different dimension values and not repeating them, making it for a kind of cleaner interface for people to digest information. And it also highlights the row that you hover on, right? It highlights it, make it a little bit easier to focus on what you try to read. Okay. Now, the main way of using pivot tables in many kind of programs and different areas is having a table that has a dimension on rows and also another dimension over the columns, right? So here we have a dimension operating system across rows. We have another dimension device category across different columns, right? And on each cell at the intersection of each of these two dimensions, we see a metric, a value. So how much revenue did we have from mobile on iOS? How much revenue did we have from mobile on Android? And et cetera, et cetera, right? And here also there is another feature of a pivot table in Day2 Studio, especially, I don't know, maybe other programs have it as well, which we can have grand total on both ways. So for the row, we can have the grand total for operating system, see it here, and we can have the grand total for the whole column for desktop as well. So there are two ways of seeing grand totals for pivot tables, okay? So the main difference, dimensions at rows and on the columns and metrics at intersections. Now, just like tables, Whenever it becomes a little bit more complicated, whenever we know the kind of preference of the user, of the viewer of the report, we can help them, right? By not only writing numbers, but showing numbers, visualizing numbers in a way, right? Here I have, again, applied bars, just like a table, to my pivot table, which makes it easier to read and compare and see the trend, how it goes down. And another really nice feature of pivot tables in Data Studio is the ability to expand. So right now, this pivot table has product category and product just like this one has. So product category and product. But I made it expandable. So I'm not showing products right away, but it is hidden under product category. So I can see the totals of each product category at a glance. But if I decide, if the viewer decides that they want to dive deeper to see the values, the products that were included in apparel, or lifestyle, for example, they can click the plus icon at the top, and now it expands to show them the drill down from apparel to all the products within that category, from new or from like collections, showing all the products within that category. Okay, so it's showing the more detailed numbers and the subtotal. What previously was the total for new, so 56,000, it's now the subtotal for this group of values, right? Do we have it here? 56,000 for new, right? So it becomes subtotal and we can see the details of that. Finally, we can apply heat map to a pivot table as well, just like we can do it with a table. But this one is a little bit more complicated. So let me explain what kind of features are we using in this pivot table. It can highlight, yes, it can have two dimensions that are expandable as well, which is cool. But there is another feature that I'm using here. So previously in column, column dimensions, I had kind of one dimension applied across columns, which was device category, like this. But 
for each device category, the only metric that I was looking at was revenue, okay, revenue. I didn't have any other metric and it only shows revenue. But here I applied two different metrics to each intersection of categories. So for apparel from paid search, I had this much revenue, first metric, and this much quantity, this many quantity as a second metric, okay? And it is a so if you have lots of categories within your dimension that you apply to the column, you can easily scroll the pivot table to get to see the rest of the columns. For the grand total here, because we have two metrics, we can see the grand total for both metrics side by side. And we can also have grand total at the bottom of the columns. Super flexible, super powerful, and it can be morphed into different shapes and format pivot table depending on how you decide to, where you decide to put the dimensions and the metrics, how many metrics do you want to apply and whether you want to expand it by default or having, having it shrinked as an expandable by click. Any questions about pivot table? All good.